we now want to see how we can draw a cross-section. And in drawing a cross-section, you're going to build on the knowledge you have of how height is indicated on the topographic map. So let's look at this extract of a topographic map. Here on this map, we see height indicated by means of spot heights, and also we see the contour lines. But did you notice that only one contour line is labeled? That's the 660 contour line. But we don't need to worry about it. We can actually use that contour line to work out the heights of other contour lines. How is that possible? Well, what do we know? We know that contour lines are always labeled upslope. And so therefore, this means that height is going to be increasing in that direction. So the next contour line will be the 680 contour line. Now, we notice something very interesting here. That the difference in height between one contour line and the next contour line is 20 meters. That is called the contour interval. And so by just looking at the way in which the contour was labeled, we learned two things, the contour interval, and we worked out the way in which the height was increasing. Now, in addition to looking at the way in which the contour lines are labeled, we can also make use of spot heights to work out height and look out, work out in which direction is the height increasing. Now, let's look at the slope on the western side of the road. How do you think that slope is increasing? It's increasing in that direction, from west to east. How do we know that? Well, look at the spot height, 7 to 2. And so therefore, if that's the highest point, then the height has to be increasing in that direction. But notice another thing that we see about contour lines. Contour lines, by looking at the arrangement of the contour lines, can tell us whether we have a steep slope or a gradual slope. And by looking at that, that will help us to know what our cross-section would look like. But before we get on to the cross-section, let's look at how we can use a spot height to work out the height of a contour line. Remember, what we did now is we looked at the uh, labeling of a contour line to work out the next contour line height. But now we want to use a spot height. So let's look at that contour line over there. What's the height of that contour line? Let's use this spot height, 7 to 1, to work out the height of that contour line. What do we know already? We know that the difference in height between one contour line and the next contour line is 20. And we know that the spot height marks the highest point. So the height of that contour line has to be lower than 720. And so what value of 720 is lower than 720? Uh, 721, that is 720. So that's the height of that contour line, 720. Let's go a bit further and see how we can use contour lines to work out, um, uh, use spot heights to work out height. But also let's look at another feature of these contour lines on the topographic map. Can you see there's a thick contour line? Now every thick contour line has a 100 meter value. Remember the interval between one and the next is 20, but every thick contour line, the interval between one thick contour line and the next thick contour line is 100. Now here we've identified a thick contour line. What would the height of that contour line be? Well, let's use the spot height over there to work out that. So that is, spot height is 5 to 9. Can you see that there's a contour line that runs to the south of spot height 5 to 9? Now, think about what we know already. The uh, contour line has to be lower in height than the spot height. And so, in this case, in this case, in this example here, because we see that the contour line is going towards the river. And so, what we now see is that, obviously, uh, this has to be a 20 value closest to 5 to 9. And so, that will be 520. And so then now we have 520, and notice how the 520 is written to show that it's going to go upslope. So now we know we're going upslope, and so if we count 20 every time, that thing called thick contour line is 600. And if that is 600, and this is the next thick contour line, we know it's increasing towards the road, the height of that thick contour line is 700. So based on this now, knowing how the contour lines work, knowing how they are arranged, it helps us to actually do the cross-section. So let's now do the cross-section. We want to do the cross-section from spot height 5 to 9 to spot height 6, 5, 8. So what we then do is we draw a line between the two points. And now what we do is we take a piece of paper and place it on that line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mark off every height that touches that piece of paper. So the first height that touches the piece of paper is the 5 to 9. Then we get to the next uh, uh, 
contour line that touches that piece of paper, and that's 520. Now, now, why did we label it 520? Think about what we discussed earlier. We said that the contour line is lower than the 529 one. We know that because uh, it's going down towards the river. We've already identified this contour line to be 520. Remember, we said that this was 520 when we worked out what the, the height of the 600 contour line is. Then what we do is we mark in the river, like that, and then can you see that there's another contour line, and so that then is the same one, and so therefore it's also 520. And now we know that height is increasing towards the, the slope is increasing in height towards the road, so now we can count off 540, 560, 580, and there's the 600 that we identified, isn't it? We have ad identified that contour line to be 600 meters. And so we can continue to go up here because remember we said that the next thick contour line would be 700 meters. And so we mark it in. Now let's just pause here for a moment. When we have two thick contour lines, 200 contour lines close together like this, they look to be roughly about a centimeter apart. It is quite acceptable not to mark in the smaller contour lines between the 200 values. You could have just marked off the 600 contour line and then moved across to the 700 contour line and you would then get an accurate cross-section. But we're just putting all of them in here to get a really very accurate cross-section there because we want to see what that slope looks like when we plot it on our cross-section. Then we're going to mark in the road and then can you see it still goes slightly higher up and we're going to 720 there, because remember, as we worked out early on, we saw that there were, that was that 720 uh, uh, contour line that we worked out with a spot height of 721. Remember, we're going through that spot height of 721, so that's a 720 line. And then we, this is a thick contour line over here, it can't be 800, because we know we're going downhill, and we don't have enough contour lines between 720 and this thick contour line to make 100, to, ma to make up a, a, a 100 value higher than 700. So in other words, we're going down towards 700, and we know we're going downhill to 658, so therefore the, that contour line will be 680, that contour line will be 660, and there we get 658. And so now we've marked in all the contour lines. We are now ready to do the cross-section. So what we've done is we've taken the piece of paper, we've traced or copied all the contour lines that are on the, on the map, and now we're going to take that piece of paper away and now we're going to take, make use of a piece of graph paper. And so we use graph paper because graph paper has got a scale on it. The graph paper here in this example is drawn with blocks of one centimeter and blocks of two millimeters. Now, even though we're using graph paper, we must remember that a, a cross section uh, is not a graph. And so therefore we don't have to start off at zero. We start off at the lowest height in the cross section, which is 500. Here we're going to use a, a vertical scale of 1 centimeter represents 100 meters. Now, the choice of scale is very important, and we're going to see this a bit later, why it's important to choose the correct vertical scale. When we look at this vertical scale, 1 centimeter being 100 meters, can you see what the 2 millimeter blocks would represent? They would represent 20, isn't it? Because there are 5 little blocks between 500 and 600, and so the difference in height between 500 and 600 is 100. So 100 divided by 5 gives you 20. So that means then that we can mark off every contour line because remember what was the interval between one contour line and the next contour line? It was 20. And so now we complete our vertical scale. The highest point on our cross section was about 720. And so therefore we go up to 700. Now we take our piece of paper and we place it at the bottom of the graph paper. So effectively, this piece of paper now becomes your uh, horizontal scale. And remember, it's an accurate horizontal scale because it's the scale of the map, isn't it? Because where did we mark off these heights? We marked them from the map. We traced them from the map. And so therefore, that's the scale, the horizontal scale, the scale of the map. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot it much the same as you plot a graph. So you're going to plot above each height. You're going to plot in, uh, uh, put in a dot. To match the, the vertical scale. But now when you're plotting this, make sure that your paper doesn't move left or right. Because if you're going to move it left or right, then it means you're going to affect the horizontal scale, isn't it? It's going to be either smaller or bigger than what it is on the map. It must be the exact same size here on the graph paper as it is on the map. And so notice now, we're just above each point, 
you plot in the heights. And so you can carefully, you could use a set square to plot in the heights, or you could effectively just move the piece of paper up and down towards those heights. Now, once you've marked in all the heights, what you're going to do is you're going to take a pencil and you're going to draw in the lines, draw the dots in, and you're going to complete the cross section. Give it a heading, write in the vertical scale, and write in the horizontal scale. And then finally, remember what else did we mark off on the map? We marked off where the road was, and we marked off where the rivers were. And so we put those in. But now notice how when we do this, we do not mark in the rivers as lines on it. But now, let's say, for example, you said, no, I don't like that. What I'd like to do is I want to make a bigger scale. So let's see what will happen. So now we need a bigger piece of graph paper. And now we're going to use a scale of 1 centimeter represents 20 meters. And so once we do that, we plot in the points, we join the points with a line, and what do you notice? The cross section is much steeper than what the other one was. So what we did is we stretched out the cross section. And so you've got to ask yourself, is this cross section a fair reflection of what we're seeing on the map? This cross section is showing that the slope is much steeper. And if you look at the, at the top, it's, it's, it's a very narrow, steep peak. But yet when we looked at the map, what did we find at the top of the ridge? We found that there was a road running at the top of the ridge. And so what we're talking about here is we're talking about vertical exaggeration. So to ensure that... So what we're talking about here is verti vertical exaggeration. And in order to re accurately reflect a feature as a cross-section, we need to calculate its vertical exaggeration. And we use the following formula to work out vertical exaggeration. It's the vertical scale over the horizontal scale. So when we think about the first cross-section we did, what was the vertical scale? One centimeter represents 100 meters. So that is going to be 1 is to 10,000. And the horizontal scale was the scale of the map. So therefore it's going to be 1 is to 50,000. And in order to do the calculation now, we have to express it as a fraction. And so we say 1 over 10,000 divided by 1 over 50,000. And then what do we do? We flip in times, and the noughts cancel each other out. And so our cross-section then is exaggerated five times. Now that's an acceptable exaggeration. Because remember, in our first cross-section, the slope, slope was not that steep. In the second cross-section, the slope was steep because we used a different scale. Instead of using a 1 is to 10,000 scale, we're now using a 1 is to 2,000 scale. And so what will happen is this, when we say 1 over 2,000 times 50,000 over 1, it will give us 25 times. So can you see why the second cross-section was not accurate? Because we stretched it out. We made the slopes steeper than what they should actually be. Now, once you've drawn in the cross-section, we're now able to work out something else, and that's intervisibility. Now, what do we mean by intervisibility? We mean if we're standing at point A, can we see point B? If we're standing at point A, can we see point C? So basically, intervisibility refers to whether one point on a map can be seen from another point. And so can you see how by drawing the cross-section, it helps us to do it? We can surmise it from the map itself. But can you see how cross-sections help us to see exactly whether we can see the feature or not? So by looking at all of these features now, you are able to gain important map skills and your map skills then are based on what you have learned already about how height is indicated on the map.